Originally set for release in June of 2022, are these figures really worth the wait and or the price? Both? Neither? Hello and welcome back to Thirsty Thursday Toys. Today, we are going to review the new Art Spirits Godzilla vs. Kong set, and our Kaiju Cocktail is a MonsterVerse take on the 7 and 7, the Mechagodzilla Eyeball Highball. For this drink, you'll need an ice sphere mold, some maraschino cherries, a lemon lime soda, silver luster dust, and a Japanese whiskey. Start by adding a cherry to your ice sphere mold and pour in some of that cherry syrup. The more you use, the redder your sphere will be. Fill it up the rest of the way with water and set it in the freezer. Pour in about four ounces of your favorite lemon lime soda, or if you like more of a classic highball, use some club soda. Then stir in some silver luster dust. Carefully place in your red ice sphere and that should give you a beautiful Mechagodzilla's eye. Then, like Bernie and Josh, destroy it with two ounces of a Japanese whiskey. Cheers. These are the Art Spirits Hypermodeling Series Godzilla vs. Kong figures. These came blind boxed, but were sold in cases of four, with each case containing one full set. In the US, this set retailed for between 100 to 120 bucks, depending on the shop. These retailed in Japan for around 8,000 yen per case of four, so about 2,000 yen per box. International shipping, though, is a doozy, so you'll wind up paying about the same no matter where you buy these. Expect to pay about 25 bucks per figure. Originally set for release in Japan in June of 2022, these were finally released in January of 2023. There's also a Mechagodzilla set that was supposed to come out before this one, but that's nowhere to be found as of the recording of this video. And before anyone says, well, yeah, the US usually gets things months after the Japanese release, I'm talking about the Japanese release. When I first pre-ordered these with Hobby Link Japan in January of 2022, it said June. Then I watched it update every month to be one more month and then one more month, so it became an I'll believe it when I see it situation. And while I now see it, I'm having a hard time believing it because, well, I have some issues with this set. For those who have seen the previous Art Spirit sets, you'll know that what they lack in articulation and affordability compared to similarly sized figures, they make up for in sculpt and paint. Maybe I've built these up too much in my head over the past literal year of waiting for these figures, or maybe there has been a dip in quality, but they definitely didn't spend the extra seven months improving these things. Let's take these one at a time. First, we have Kong. While Kong doesn't really do anything for me design-wise and therefore isn't my favorite, I think this one might be the most well-done figure in the entire set. The paint all matches up, and you can tell a lot of work went into this one. The wash on the teeth, even the teeny tiny pupils that you can only see at just the right angles. Much like the film, I think Kong here received the most attention. The axe comes as separate pieces, which you can easily plug in the hands there, and even if you put it in upside down, you can just rotate it around. It's actually cast in a translucent material, so that's really nice. The stand comes in two clear pieces and plugs into the back. You have to put it through Kong's legs, which is fine. The problem with this dynamic of a pose is that Kong doesn't work without the stand unless you're like playing around with it. Much like the character, Kong would otherwise lay there without human intervention. Or much like the character, he's kind of useless without an additional tool. Either way, much like the character, he needs something to be able to rise above the Godzilla which is the next figure we're looking at, roaring up at Kong. I know this pose is supposed to represent Godzilla firing his breath at the axe, but it doesn't come with a beam effect. Whatever beams you do have lying around could balance in there, but none of the ones I have lock into place or anything. The glowing spines are painted on this one, unlike the translucent spines of the King of the Monsters version. While I do prefer translucent spines, I greatly appreciate when all the spines are the same color instead of some being painted and some being translucent and having the whole look just be off. I thought this one would solve that problem, but it suffers from one of my other pet peeves where each part is painted independently of one another and you can clearly see the discrepancies. This figure is also a little top front heavy due to the pose, but the silver lining there is that if it falls forward, it might be the best representation we have of him in that crawling position. Additionally, the paint inside the mouth is a totally different shade of blue than the blue on the back. That part doesn't bug me, but I think it's worth noting. I don't know. Either way, I do like things in the smaller scale, and it's nice to have a mini version of this scene on my shelf. This one also works with the Ghidorah from the King of the Monsters set, and yeah, my Ghidorah has collapsed under its own weight over the years, so I gotta weigh its tail down, but ignoring that for now, while the Godzilla works with the Kong, it's posed a little too high to make sense next to the Mechagodzilla. Forget the Godzilla. This figure is my favorite from the set. 
This design has really grown on me since the film's release, and I appreciate the more neutral pose this figure has here. They gave it those red highlights and a black wash, so it's not just a big pile of silver. They even highlighted the pistons on the legs there. The paint on the wash is not super evenly applied, and you can see parts where it pulled up, like on the bottom of the tail there, and some parts in the chest, but that's not a deal breaker for me. Out of all the smaller Apex Mechagodzillas, like the High Grade and the Playmates, this one is far and away my favorite. And one of the best parts? The hands can apparently plug into either arm and can rotate around, giving us articulation. I will take it. Finally, we have the Skull Crawler, which comes on a base for some reason. The Rodan and Mothras from the King of the Monsters set came with bases, so that's not unheard of, but this base is truly bizarre, and I'm real curious about what's going on here. It appears to be water, but is hardly translucent like I'd expect water base to be. Was this from a deleted scene? Are these Mechagodzilla parts? This just raises more questions. While the figure can be displayed on its own without the base, the pegs used to plug into the base are sticking out of the bottom of the feet, which I think is pretty stupid. Those should be sticking out of the base to plug into the feet and not the other way around, because now it just looks weird without the base. I'm tempted to get a second one, cut off the pegs, and give it more of a Skull Island paint scheme, because apparently I can't have too many skull crawlers. Also, the bottom of the base has some paint smears, and you can see where they both molded and imprinted the copyright information. It's kind of a mess down there. So, in sum, this isn't a perfect set. I don't regret getting them, but I do regret being so excited to get them, I guess. While the paint, detail, and size is definitely above high-grade quality, I don't think they're worth five times the cost. But hey, if you see something here you like, definitely go for it. For Kong fans, you're certainly in for a treat, and I hope you can hunt these down. In the meantime, thanks for helping out the channel by watching and subscribing, and please drink responsibly. And then the Kong fell over and the axe snapped. So now it's got to be glued in there, and, well, that could work.